Hello, everybody, and welcome to a week of classes for an NYU student or whatever I'm going to call this. My name is Mark. I'm doing a double major in computer science and language in my, which is essentially psychology and linguistics and a splash of philosophy, and a minor in game design, and I'm graduating in three and a half years, December 2021.5. Uh, a while ago, I made a bunch of month of classes videos, and those were fun, but they felt kind of redundant. I wanted to do it again in Paris, but we got sent home early, and so I'm finally taking my opportunity to try a new format and just make a video on it now. It is the first week of November, and I've got a bunch of assignments going on, so I figured it would be good to kind of get the big picture of all these classes. I'm not sure how I'm gonna edit this together yet, but it's gonna be like a week in the life video, and I'm gonna be talking about my classes as I go along. So I'm taking five classes this semester and it's a really nice balance amongst my language and mind major, my computer science major, and the core requirements that I have to complete for NYU CAS, which is the College of Arts and Sciences, which is the liberal arts. So for computer science, I have operating systems and computer graphics. For my core requirement, I have cultures and contexts. And then for my language and mind major, I'm doing cognition and intro to semantics. I feel like that's a pretty good balance in case you're looking for what classes are like at NYU, whether they be STEM or humanities. But regardless, I am NYU UCAS, so this video is going to speak for their liberal arts college, not Tisch or Tandon or anything like that. 714, I have to get some final review edits on the how to watch TV productively video, and if you haven't checked that out, you can do so here. I think there's some really valuable thoughts in it, because Premiere was giving me issues last night, so I had to render to make actual edits, and the video has to be out in two hours. I have to hit my alarm clock and turn it on. So I'm going to do that, and then since it's Monday, and just like Wednesdays, we have operating systems and computer graphics following one after the other. All right, so that is two classes done for uh, Monday. <laughs> Pretty much how my week is structured is that Mondays is operating systems and then computer graphics one after the other. And then I have kind of the rest of the day to do whatever work I want in whatever order I want. And Tuesdays is kind of similar. It's the three primary classes that run. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, I have recitations for classes. So there's an extra class or two on those days. I'm gonna take a 30 minute break or so. For my cultures and context class, we have an essay due next Monday. And then throughout my week, I have these deep work blocks scattered throughout where I intend and I've been pretty bad at sticking to this, but intend to get specifically schoolwork done. I actually write up all of my notes. Usually there are a page or two pages, and then I type them up at the end of every single day. It's tedious and it is kind of annoying, but if you want to work on your typing, it's a good way to do that. And it's a really good way to review your notes at the end of the day. You can put in supplementary comments or things that you might not remember in the future and are like, oh yeah, wait, we did talk about that. It also helps me pay attention. But I want to explain what my cultures and context class is like. Because classes are online for this entire semester, they all run quite differently. So cultures and context is the core class that everyone has to take at CAS and the subtopic, so to speak, ranges a little bit. For example, you could take one in the Pacific Islands or you could take one on Russia. I chose the one on indigenous Australia. Personally, I really like core classes. I think they offer a really cool spectrum. I don't know where else I'd be learning about indigenous Australia. The professors are also from all different departments. So for my CNC class, my professor is an anthropology professor. And so it's really cool seeing this from an anthropological lens. So as with every class, it meets twice a week, but there is a recitation section, which is on Wednesday. And for those of you who don't know, recitations are sort of like smaller meetings with your TAs and a lot of classes have them, especially those early on in a major or a core class. For example, there are about 80 or 90 kids in my CNC class, and my recitation only has eight people. Uh, in terms of grades, we have four essays over the semester, each about 1,500 to 1,750 words, and the top three grades are taken for 75% of our grade. And then the last 25% of our grade is based on five small one-page papers that are roughly 250 to 300 words. I feel like a lot of people ask you know, what if you just don't go to class? I think with online classes, one of the best things we can do to keep ourselves accountable is just to go. Also, I found university classes, if you just go and pay attention, you get the right amount of knowledge. In terms of showing up to class, any class you can get by without showing up, but I think, especially with online university, we're still paying full tuition at this point. So show up, be there for the professor, turn your camera on, like let them know you're there, let them know you're present. I, I think it really goes a long way. I mean, I'm speaking to a camera right now. I understand the meta feeling that professors must be feeling at this point in time. Anyway, we don't have class tomorrow, uh, since why I'm doing the explanation now. If you have any questions about core classes or anything, feel free to drop a comment. I pretty much will definitely respond. I'm about halfway through the chapter, I'm feeling really distracted. I have some ideas down on my document. I ha I'm entering my deep work block for the day and I just figure I wanna mention something real quick. Throughout this video, I am recording all the times I'm working on classes and stuff. It's not always like this. In an ideal world, for me at least, when I wake up at 6.45, I kind of just 
chill, lie around, with no, no social media or anything until like eight. I do like hobby projects and stuff from eight to 9.30. And then I have classes and I have, you know, some one hour lunch break somewhere. And then I kind of work on stuff until like seven or eight. But that doesn't always happen. I'm gonna end up lying down. I'm already feeling like going to lie down for like 15 minutes. Here in my little schedule, I moved my essay thing back because I went to eat and then I just kind of sat here listening to some music and thinking. So it's not like it's always productive time. I'm gonna try to not mention this seven times this time, but I just wanna make that clear that I'm not, you know, some ubermensch productive student or whatever. And even then you're only seeing me with class stuff. So I'm gonna take a little time, apply to one of four internships for the summer. I won't be bummed if I don't get it, but I kinda, I think it would be cool to get one of these. It's so nice to just chill at the end of the day. It's, it's becoming much more possible for me to say, you know, you can watch YouTube, TV or whatever at after eight and chill. I don't have to feel guilty doing it. Anyway, that's the topic for another time. All right, it is 5.28 PM. Took about like a half hour nap, 45 minute nap there, and then did some editing. So I switched some things around, but we're getting on to graphics homework. I'm gonna do 30 minutes of input time right now. It's due on Wednesday morning, so I'm gonna, as I usually do, do most of the work tomorrow. But computer graph, <laughs> <laughs> computer graphics is the second class I'll talk about since this is the second class I have on Monday. It's a computer science elective, so it's not required to take, but you can take it to count toward these computer science major or minor. And the idea is that we learn about how graphics engines work. So this isn't, you know, graphics design as in Photoshop or Illustrator, but how ray tracing works, how 3D objects are rendered, what the math is to use matrices and vectors and all this fun stuff to calculate what shows up on screen. The whole class also is project-based. In other words, we have a homework assignment every week. You know, you can get by by doing the bare minimum, which unfortunately I have done the bare minimum at some points, or you can go hard and really have fun with the assignments, which I've also done. I feel like it's been half and half. This is the topic I'm super adamant about, about some, you know, from someone who's messed around with game engines and uses Blender a lot. It's been really fun to learn this, the theory behind all of this. We go over the theory in class and we use the code that was written in the class. The the, Perlin's explanations are absolutely amazing. I feel like the lectures at the beginning were kind of lackluster, but after week like four or five, I realized that once my professor was able to get into the actually like interesting stuff, the, the quality of lectures just increased so much just because it wasn't, you know, teaching how to do basic things over and over again. When you teach the same class over and over, I imagine it gets redundant. But nonetheless, every week is a homework assignment and there's a final project at the end of the semester. So to quickly use my own work as an example, the first homework was just you know, creating different things in the graphic shader, learning how the graphic shader works, the fragment shader works. Then we worked on spheres. And so the homework was, you know, make two more spheres and do something with them. Then we got into things like matrix transformation. So we're taking the entire canvas here and using matrices, transforming it. Now there, this is the code on the left here, but I, I edit my code in an IDE called brackets. This is, you know, what the code that Perlin was writing and explaining in class. So this week, as I go to his page, we were working on uh, implementing the mouse position into, uh, so that you can use that as a variable. So this is the homework that we're given. We're gonna go down here. Let's change the torso, you know, cube mesh, save, come over here, reload, and look at that, the torso is a cube. But yeah, that's how computer graphics has been working. It's been a super fun class so far. The online format's been pretty good. There were some connection issues early on, but resolved at this point. And it's a very small class. It's got like 20 people in it, which is super cool. On to tomorrow. Okay, so I can't find my tripod right now, but it is Tuesday, it is 7.26 a.m. My mom is about to start teaching a class, which is why I'm doing this early. We don't have class today for my College and Context class because it is election day. We've been asked to watch a film for my class that was originally due and I have to get the readings done as well. So, boom, here we have to Bob Mermaid and Morphe chapter nine. Starting at 8 a.m. I'm gonna go make myself some breakfast real quick though. Then I'm gonna finish up my semantics homework. Yeah, keep it a busy day and hopefully I can get everything wrapped up by eight again. That would be fantastic. So I'm majoring in language and mind. Now this is essentially half linguistics, half psychology, and then like one philosophy requirement. And these three topics are what I was really interested in when I was coming into school. I went to declare my second major as psychology. I saw it say psychology, linguistics, language and mind. I said, what's this? And they said that what it was. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Best decision of my life. Semantics is essentially the meaning of language. I've only taken linguistics one. I want I want to take so many linguistics classes. It's kind of crazy. The linguistics department is fantastic at NYU. It's very unlike computer science. It's really small and you kind of get to know everybody. But yeah, semantics has been 70% of our grade is based on weekly problem sets. Uh, and they're not that bad. Uh, when I get to my semantics homework, I'll talk about it a bit more. 15% participation and 15% quizzes. We've had one quiz, but we're supposed to get a redo on it. Because one of the last questions, I guess, threw a lot of people off. It threw me off. It was like five 
five questions and so the one question kind of docks a lot of points which was unfortunate again i'm biased but it's a super fascinating class the professor is super engaging the ta is great it's like 20 of us of all my classes it is the only one that is not fully online it's on tuesday and thursday so on tuesday half the class is in person half the class is online and on thursday the other half is in person the other half is online but because you know most of us are online fully there's like three or four kids in class on either day but the professor and the ta have been managing super well and the participation is great it's a discussion based class it always feels awkward but it's good to get used to that i think it means a lot to professors and other students to a certain degree when you are able to talk so whatever kind of class you're in see if there's an opportunity to get on the mic ask a question get engaged yeah that's kind of the explanation for intro to semantics for, for my classes this semester um the only one with exams is operating systems and that kind of means you don't have to study right but you, you putting in the work you still have to learn personally that's what i love about online classes there's no focus on studying for a specific exam question but you get to learn if you have any questions leave them in the comments below maybe more specific questions the homework more specific questions about scheduling what recitations are whatever it may be leave them down below i doubt i'll get many but if i do get a lot i'll try to make a follow-up because this video is for people who are looking to you know maybe take one of these classes or are coming to nyu and want to know what it's like and it's hard for me to just kind of record my entire day because a lot of it would just be me writing things which isn't very fun <laughs> So yeah, drop any questions you have. Um, I'd be happy to make a follow-up video. I'm gonna get reading, semantics homework, essay outline, and then semantics class. I shouldn't have cut my semantics homework this close, but I finished two out of three problems. I just had to write it out so it looks nice. I finished problem three, which I hope will be okay. Okay, so this is the semantics homework. Uh, the format is pretty much always like this. So this is the current homework. Every week we have a different idea. We discuss something in class. And honestly, Professor Barker is really good at making the discussion feel natural. And by the end, you're like, whoa, wait, how did we get to this topic? And in a good way, it's kind of like we start off going over things and then all of a sudden I find ourselves in the topic we're supposed to be on. And I'm like, what? And there's like no slides or anything. The TA is great. She has like a, the Zoom whiteboard up, which is super helpful. Um, but anyway, these are the homeworks that we get. Um, so this is an example of homework four and this is an example of the current homework, homework seven. So this is the messiness of my current homework. This is part two, which is a very verbose answer. This is the rough draft of my of my homework, right? This is the final draft of the homework. These are just the first two questions. I feel like I'm way too formal in these semantics assignments. Each of these reasons have fairly simple negations. These negations remain... <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I love this proofy stuff, but I feel like it's almost too much. Anyway, I have 34 minutes to finish. Well, 30 minutes to finish this third question, and then I scan it into Dropbox. So, almost there. I sort of fear that uh, I wrote so much because I'm not certain of the answers, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I need to scan these into Dropbox though. It's due in 15 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. I don't usually cut my homeworks that close, but semantics I felt comfortable with, and it was just kind of copying it over. Regardless, this is this video is getting so derailed. I don't even know how long it's gonna be. All right, and cognition is over. So cognition is graded based on a few things, actually. I'll throw a little splash up on the syllabus, but what's important, because we're online, we're required to do all but eight participation checks so far, and all of them have been showing up to class, which are due 24 hours after, in case you're watching it async. Then there's eight out of 14, I believe, papers called QDAFIs. In short, a QDAFI is a very, very short, 200 word max review of a scientific paper. And it's it's pretty much to boil down the summary of a, of a paper and remember it better. What questions does the, do the authors ask? What do they do? What's their rationale? What do they find? And what are the implications there? It's a pretty good method. Uh, it, it helps me remember what's going on in the papers and they're really not long assignments. It's like 20 to 30 minutes of concentrated work and you can get them done very easily. Plus we get fascinating papers. When I was in person, this professor took the best three or four primary exams, but since we're all online, he's doing these two things. One is an EDM project. The other is the final project. The final project, all we know about it so far is that it's a five minute video presentation on some type of paper. I don't know, maybe it'll break up monotony. 
I'm not sure. It, it's right up my alley, so I'm kind of lucky there. The other one is Empirical Data Management Research Project. We were given a stimulus, an image, and we've been asked to design a research project around it during our recitation section slash on our own. So it's another big project, and essentially at the end, we're going to have a research proposal. Based on the uh, rubric for it, it doesn't seem like it's an actual research proposal, but it comes pretty close. We're making our own research project on the stimulus, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, it involves Blender, so I've opened Blender for the first time in like nine months, and we're doing 3D space manipulation, so it's fun. I think it's a super cool project. It's very practical. So assuming classes stay online, even if they don't, I could see them continuing this. So if you're taking a class with Pascal Wallace, either neuro cognitive neuroscience or cognition, there's a very good chance you'll be doing this. Otherwise, the lectures are really good. My only like, the only problem I have with them is the chat is very lively. It, like it's almost like a, chit, a, a Twitch chat and the professor does get sort of off topic. Most of the time though, it's still fascinating to hear about, but we are four lectures behind. I mean, what well, classes don't fall behind at this point, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna stream my my uh, graphics coding and my operating systems coding, which I've saved for the last two hours of the night. Hopefully that doesn't just totally burn me out. I also have my essay outline to finish because I, I'm still procrastinating that. Um, clearly my schedule's changed, but we have 10 more tasks left. Whew. I'll intercut some of that streaming footage and we're off to Wednesday. Oh, it's because I did this again. God dang it. Ugh. There it is, there it is. All right, see you uh, sick election. Bye bye, Rocky Stone. Yeah, what is, oh, Kentucky, leading blue. Time to suffer through which CH mod it is again. <laughs> so, as I continue to further procrastinate my essay and get caught up in election stress, it's Wednesday, 3.32 p.m., and uh, class is finished a long time ago. I want to take this opportunity to describe operating systems and just how the recitation worked. This morning was pretty general recitation. TA quickly went over the material and just like what we you know had to read and watch for today. I was able to ask a question I had about the essay and I, I, I told myself I would treat it like an in-class essay today, but it's so hard to just sit down and do it. I don't know why. So that's out of the way. I just wanted to talk about operating systems. So I didn't actually get to the lab last night. I did stream my graphics homework and a few people stopped by, which is really cool. So maybe I'll talk about the lab later tonight, but pretty much we have homework, which is 10% of our grade. We've only had one homework so far and I did not do so hot on it. There's labs. Uh, we have three, potentially four at the current pace, not four. Uh, and those make up 30% of the grade. The first lab was really easy. They're not grading your code or anything. It's just as long as it's functional. He's very strict in the fact that he's testing your the topics. He's not testing our ability to code C. He's just testing our understanding of what we're doing. And onto the next item on the syllabus, our midterm is 25% of our grade. I don't know how I did on that. I genuinely don't. Midterm was also kind of like the, the, the labs and the homeworks in terms of understanding. It was take home. So we had 24 hours to complete it. I pretty much spent like 10 hours like doing one problem and do whatever else. Do one problem do whatever else. I should have focused and just done it, which I will do for the final. Essentially, some of the questions, and I'm not going to show them for obvious reasons, I hope, they were literally like, okay, assume you have this situation of an operating system. I'm trying to block the window. In maximum of three sentences, justify what you would do in this case. If you were the operating system designer, what would you do and why? and no more than three sentences. And the final is then 35% of our grade. As far as I know, a lot of CS classes work this way, at least the core ones. My algorithms class was pretty similar. That's pretty much how operating systems has worked. The, the lectures are really good. He does a really good job of moderating chat. He'll kind of go over something in the slides and then say, does anyone have any questions or does anyone have a potential answer? I'll give you the mic. So far, I, I think that presentation has been working very efficiently in terms of Zoom discussion, so that's good. That's pretty much how OS has been working. It's lecture and then sometimes I'll review my notes. Most of the time I won't. All in all, just like a the previous course CSO, which you can find a video on here in case you're curious. Uh, I found I was, I'm very interested in the hardware and learning how this stuff works. There are definitely things that go way over my head and it takes me a long time to grasp them, if ever. Nonetheless, it's a very intriguing class and the professor keeps it engaging. So that's that. Okay, so, um, gotta be quiet, it's late. <laughs> it is, um, is it Wednesday, November 11th. Post update for everybody to this week. Regarding the CNC essay, I don't actually remember if I covered this, but I had six pages handwritten out and I typed it all up and ended up being about five pages and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. I wanna talk about the operating systems lab. It was due tonight, well it's due in about 50 minutes. It's 11.05 p.m. I probably spent a collective 10 to 12 hours on the lab itself. I very much underestimated it. The first one was really easy, especially having just done this one. I ended up rewriting the first algorithm of three that we had to write like three times. Each rewrite kind of taught me something new. And man, have I learned something. I can look at the code all day and not lose my absolute crap. It's getting stressed, but I sat down, I did it, we're good. Anyway, without this turning into a rant, I spent like a little bit of time parsing the balance. You know, I was like, oh, the rest of this is gonna be easy. It's gonna be all 
conceptual. It's not like actual processes and stuff. I got all the test cases working. They're all working on the sim servers. Uh, seeing as that lab is finally concluded, I just wanted to add this on to the end of the video because the lab was meant to be a huge part of it and I didn't end up making it a huge part of it. No time lapses or anything, I just needed to focus on the lab. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have another homework or so. We might have another lab, we'll see. Probably not. Uh, but anyway, on to whatever is next in my sequence for this. I need to stop pushing this off and just write my essay. I have ideas, I have good ideas, I have evidence, some evidence. Until then, see ya. It's Thursday, November 5th. Guess who still hasn't finished the paper? I did get an intro paragraph done and I still haven't done the first algorithm for the lab. I'm gonna see how much I can do in the next 25 minutes, but we have linguistics recitation. I got a 9.75 on my homework. I messed up the quantifier raising. I'm happy with that, out of 10. The last thing I wanted to talk about was recitation. So recitations happened for all of my core classes up until this point, and pretty much all of my intro classes. Most of the time they've been very useful to attend. A lot of the time they've been required. In my data structures class, my first semester, there were like 10 kids who showed up to lecture and like 30 or 40 who showed up to recitation. So it varies from class to class. Class, but it's pretty nice. So for linguistics is the whole class meeting for a third time We're gonna go over the homework and just review principles for cognition It's kind of smaller groups meeting, but the TAs essentially run a review lecture. They're much more laid-back You're like much less scheduled. You can you know, just ask random questions if something wasn't clear again They vary so my operating systems class nor my computer graphics class have recitations as far as I know Or would think the higher level more specific classes don't have recitations, but I could be wrong on that Of course, that's just the pattern I've seen I've been having a weird past two or three days. I'm very glad I was able to get these recordings out, but alas, that is my week. Since I have five classes on Thursday, I don't think I mentioned that actually. Yeah, I have a class in the morning, hour and a half break, and then boom, 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 boom. Again, if you have any questions, let me know down below. Depending on how much traction the video gets, there's a good chance I'll make a follow-up video because, again, it's hard to do this video when it's so, when it lacks direction. Uh, but regardless, I will maybe check in with you tomorrow? Nope, because this video has gone on long enough, but thanks so much for watching. You can check out some other videos here, and there are some cards in the top right corner if you want to check that out. But thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on Monday.